Hi guys, it's Lynn here. Hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Now in this video, I'm going to be giving the majority of my desert cacti a very good watering for the very first time after their long winter rest. And I've watered some plants in the polytunnel already. The punctures, the prickly pear group of uh, cacti, I gave them a good water the other day. I made a video when I did that. Also all the aloes, gasterias, hawarthias, I've given them a good water as well and they're all plumping up nicely. My echeverias and graptopotalums and the like, I watered them about a week or two ago as well. They're doing really well. But I haven't done the majority of the other type of cacti, the desert cacti. And I have lots coming into bud. I've got the Camaserius, Camalabivias, as you can see buds there starting to form. And um, the Raybushias as well, Suco Raybushias also. The Mammillarias and Gymnoclisiums buds forming so these are, and all the ferro cacti too these are going to need a good drink after the winter and also got other type astrophytum cacti here um luxembourgia there and uh, telocactus as well look how shriveled this one is guys and also this one very wrinkly and uh large ferro cactus there so they're going to need a good a good watering after long winter rest. A lot of our Lophophoras here as well. These aren't doing too bad. They're, they're not really wrinkly as such, but I will be giving a bit of a water today. And uh, also some sort of young seedlings I've got. These are five years old. Sort of not really seedlings as such, but still quite young. I've grown from seed, Trichocereus, Scopolicola, mini, little babies. Um, look how wrinkled they are. And uh, also this one, Trochocereus, very wrinkled too. And lots more, sort of Trochocereus pachanoi, sort of hybrids that I've grown myself from seed. Um, these are doing really well, and these, but they're starting to wrinkle, as you can see. So they're gonna really fatten up with a good drink and some Corypanther seedlings, all I've grown from seed. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on today, giving the cacti, mostly the ones in the smaller pots, a very good watering. All the larger ones, such as these very large sort of Trichocereus cacti, they're gonna be coming out into the yard and into our sort of middle green greenhouse. Um, for the spring and summer when the nights, the cold nights have completely gone away. It's still a little bit dodgy at the moment, sort of five, six, seven Celsius. Not a problem for the plants in here and the other ones we've got outside, but I don't want to be putting anything out just yet if it's going to uh, be a little bit too cool. So I'm going to be keeping these a little bit dry for longer. Plus when we go to lift these outside and put into the yard, they're really heavy when we water them. So a couple of weeks without water for these large fellas. It's not going to hurt them, but um, I'm going to be watering all of the other cacti here on these tables, giving them a really good water. As you can see, buds coming on our Echinocereus cacti as well there, very exciting. And all our Echinopsis as well, we've got quite a large variety of Echinopsis here. Lots of them are starting to form buds already, which is very exciting news. Seed pod on this one too, but buds forming, so really, really really good news so they're desperate to be watered so that's what I'm going to be doing today now as I've mentioned in a few of my videos when I uh, when I do start up with watering the cacti and succulents after the winter rest I always like to use a tomato fertilizer and I use a, a brand by maxi crop but you can use tomorite or any other good quality tomato feed or any good quality cactus and succulent fertilizer whichever you whatever you prefer a lot of good quality cactus and succulent fertilizer will be high in potassium to encourage blooming as well and I like that the cactus fertilizer I use also alongside maxi crop is Kempac but the reason why I use maxi crop tomato fertilizer is because it's it's what produces tomatoes is the high potassium and that also helps to encourage more flowers and since I've been using it I've noticed I have great success with getting more flowers on my cacti that's just my experience and uh, I, I, I've made a whole video on why I like to use tomato fertilizer to, to feed my cacti and succulents and I mentioned how often I use the fertilizer why I use it and what strength and everything like that so if you haven't seen that video do check it out I'll link the video up above and down below in the video description. And I've made many videos on how to know when to water your cacti succulents for the first time 
after their winter rest. So I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video. This is more a bit of a video vlog. I've made um, a few videos over the years on this, but I've made a special video on how to know specially because it can depend on so many different things, such as where you're living in the world, your climate, your temperature, whether you have your plants indoors or outdoors, whether in a greenhouse, whether it's heated, unheated. So many questions, and I mentioned, I, I cover all that in the video, so do check that out. Links also up above and down below in the video description. So just to cover it a little bit briefly here, I've made up the, um, the water solution here with a tomato feed and normally when I start to use the tomato sorry normally when I use the tomato feed to fertilize the cacti and succulents I use it every sort of three to four weeks or every third to fourth watering I give them and I use it at half the strength that they recommend using for tomatoes on the on the package but with the first watering with these desert cacti I'm, I've only used quarter of the strength that they recommend for tomatoes because I don't want to go too much with the fertilizing initially because they've been kept dry all over the winter months and probably no harm would come to them but I don't want to shut them too much by giving them a, too much fertilizer all at once I want to break them into after their winter rest a little bit more gently by using less fertilizer but that's just my personal experience it really doesn't matter um, as long as it works for you so here we go then guys let's get to watering and I don't want to bore you all watering the whole of the polytunnel because it could be a long video. I'm just going to include some video clips of the different genus of, of uh, cacti when I'm watering them. And I'm going to cover that in this video. So I'm going to start off with, oh, where do I start? <laughs> when you have so many plants. I'll start off at this side. As I say, I've done the punctures already. I gave them a really good water and feed the other day and all of the um, aloes and gastias and warthias. And by the way, if you didn't watch them videos, I'll also link them videos down below as well if you want to watch me when I was watching all of them um, and with your punctures as well. They're sort of really good to see them all fattening out a bit now. And I've obviously watered the succulents. I've started them up already and lots of uh, buds coming up on the echeverias, which is really good. The watering has really sort of helped to plump them all up again. Hopefully it would do the same with these. My um, echinopsis aren't really shriveled anyway. They're pretty good. This one's a bit shriveled, but all the rest are okay. And uh, good watering now and fertilizing with the tomato feed should really help encourage them buds. And by sort of June, July time, they should be bursting with flowers. <laughs> so here we go. I'm just gonna pump up this pump spray. <laughs> I like to use one of these pump sprays with the long nozzles because you can get to reach all the plants at the back of the polytunnel. Um, when I'm using a watering can, I used to knock plants over before, but this is great. And also because it's got a thin nozzle, you can aim it right towards the, the root, the root ball as well, rather than sort of watering it and it goes everywhere. So here we go, I'm gonna start. These, these are the tephro cacti, I've already watered them the other day, which I included in that video. So I'm going to start from here just onwards. Want to make sure as well that when you give them their first water and you give them a good, good thorough soaking as well. Now obviously if you've got, I've made videos even watering shriveled cacti in winter, sometimes you have to do that if you have them indoors. I've had to do that with my indoor cacti but absolutely no trouble to give these a really good water now.
very happy to see there's buds on my Gymno Calician horse tea and this has beautiful pink flowers and it hasn't flowered for me for the past three years so I'm really excited that it's in bud this year. Now that's all this side, the left side of the polytunnel, all watered and fed. And now I've just got left some of the, um, the young seedlings here, some Cleistocactus seedlings and Echinopsis subdenudatus. They're about two years old, got the little spots on them, so cute. Some more little seedlings down here. They've all been dry over the winter as well. So they're gonna have a good watering now. And then I'm gonna start on, um, all I've got left then is some more sort of uh, ferrocactus here, telocactus, some amylarias and uh, some astrophytums here and then the lophophoras and the matacanas at the back and uh, obviously these small trichocereus then I'm going to leave the, the plants in the bigger pots for another day because it's mainly all the smaller ones that needed a good watering today so nearly done guys I've got these little trichocereus pacanoi hybrid seedlings to give a good water into and also these very shriveled ones here. Now I'm really pleased because I've just been watering the, uh, the plants here and I noticed there's loads of buds on my Mammillaria snowcap. Tons and tons of buds. So really excited about that. Areocarpus. Give them a good watering too. And uh, my astrophytums. So I have these videos really long guys. Almost done. I've just got the matacanas here and these lophophoras and I've got plenty more lophophoras up in my grow room but I watered them about a month or so ago because they're indoors so they needed to have a water because they're obviously they're indoors but these ones I've not watered yet so they're going to have their first watering of the year as well and lophophoras once you give them a good good water they burst into flower so these are my matacanas here give them a good uh, good spread there's buds already forming there on uh, this Matacana Pulse Very exciting. It's amazing when you give them a good water and they're fattened up and they just burst out then in, in bud. So these are all my lofts. No signs of any buds yet on the lofts, but believe it or not, when I give these a good watering now, within a few weeks, they're gonna burst out into bud and flower. A bit of overhead watering does them good too. Especially with lophophoras because they're very prone to spider mites and giving them a bit of a watering, overhead watering can help to flush any pests away. They often love the dry um, environment. A 
Falafophora cuspositosus, multi-headed specimen. And it's sort of normal for Falafophoras to go very flat and a very red, sort of dark plummy colour when they're desperate to be watered and have plenty of sunshine. So these will fatten up pretty soon. Woohoo, that's all of the plants here on the tables, fully watered and fed. Um, so that's very, very good. Wonderful to do. They're going to plump up nicely now over the next few days. And as I mentioned, lots of them, lots of them have lots of buds. So they're going to be bursting into flower over the coming weeks. I just want to mention here with the Lophophora cacti, it's always good to use the overhead watery method. And uh, especially with Lophophoras, because this is an example here of past spider mite damage. Spider mite is a very annoying pest of cacti and they particularly like Lophophoras and you don't see them, they're impossible to see with the human eye unless you've got incredibly good eyesight like an eagle but you often see the damage afterwards and uh, they, they leave that annoying sort of scabbiness here now I treat them successfully with neem oil and uh, I've made a few videos on how to use neem oil to get rid of uh, insect pests on your plants including Lophophora so if you want to know if you notice this on your Lophophoras or cacti in general and you want to know how to get rid of this annoying pest, then do check out the video out I have made on how to use neem oil for Lophophora and other cactus. Links up above and down below in the video description. But luckily enough, the neem oil works really well. This is all the new growth here, you can see, coming out from the scabby corkiness there. And uh, it's one of them pests that just keeps coming back and back, a bit like mealybug. People often say to me, how can I get rid of mealybug and insect pests for good? Unfortunately, you can't. There's no cure. <laughs> you just have to treat insects and keep them at bay as much as possible. It's all about keeping them under control rather than completely eliminating them because you can treat them with the best the best bug treatment in the world and then they're going to keep coming back so it's all about keeping them under control and I find the neem oil works very very good as well with that so um, just want to mention that there so guys I hope you enjoyed the video and it's so good to get water in the uh, the desert cacti after their long uh, dry period over the winter and into the early spring you can see lots of flowers, you can see buds there on the big Astrophytum ornatum and loads, loads of flowers coming up over the next few weeks. So stay tuned for lots of future videos, guys. And thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far in the video, then uh, congratulations to you. And if you haven't done already, please do subscribe and don't forget to click that notification bell. You can follow me on uh, Instagram and Twitter and Facebook as at Desert Plants of Avalon. And also check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, and tons and tons of crazy cactus power from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye. Yippee, so many birds.